Praise the Lord, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. I wanted to talk to you today about something that was on my mind. I was just thinking about so I just went on and grabbed my mic and decided I'll just I'll have to start doing this. Because sometimes I go on some really good rants, but I don't record them. <laughs> so I said, I'm going to start recording them. I just go back and listen to them. Make sure I didn't say anything that contradict the scriptures, and then I'll just put it up. <laughs> so, uh, I was just thinking about how I know, you know, n- not even just the scriptures. Okay, that should be our first go-to as believers, right? All matters of faith and practice. That we put the word of God paramount in our lives. Reason being, well, you know, the word says that the Lord puts his word above his name. So we have that. But then I was thinking about how we have the word. You know, people lost their lives putting this Bible together for us and bringing it to the world. I mean, if you study the history of what transpired and how the Catholic Church (laughs) eviscerated people, filleted people alive, set them on fire, uh, tortured them, killed them, attempted to kill people, Just for wanting to bring not only the true gospel to the world, but the Bible itself. Yeah, hardly anybody ever talks about that. It's it's true anyhow. But I was thinking how there were people who heard the gospel. They heard Paul preach and teach. They heard Peter. They heard some other unnamed believer in the scripture That got this thing, got on fire for Jesus, and went out preaching the gospel. But they're not recorded in the scripture. You never know their name. We won't meet them until we get to heaven. We don't know nothing about them right now. But imagine you're in some outlying village somewhere. Someone, whether it was one of the known apostles or an unknown believer, comes out and preaches to you the gospel. Here you are, you in this little village, you live in very modestly, whatever type of home structure you have, your your local water, you had to maybe walk a little ways to get your water, and you li- you don't even really have paper and script. Maybe you don't even know how to read and write. But somebody comes and preaches to you the gospel. But they don't have a Bible to leave you. I want you to think about this because we don't think about stuff like this often enough or to understand that it would have to be eternal security or what would even be the point of preaching. I want you to think about that for a minute. See, we live in a world of 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 residual and, you know, residual setups in their system where... Everything is about uh, having to come back to repatronize something, to keep things going, like your light bill comes every month, right? The system is set up for a bill to come due all the time for something. And so we get that in our mindset and we think that's in the economy of God when it's not. That's why I love the fact that Jesus said, it is finished. To tell us die, paid in full. That's found in John 19, 28 through 30. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now there was a set of vessel, there was a set, Excuse me. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon hyssop and put it to his mouth. 
When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. So a whole lot in there. <laughs> a whole lot of information in that little passage of scripture. Don't ever forget that Jesus didn't die because of his punishment, torture, how you know, hanging on the cross. He didn't die. He gave up the ghost. What does that mean? I mean, he did not die like you and I would die, beloved. Well, we just had enough and it's just time. <laughs> it's just what happens to us kills us. No, this is showing us that Jesus determined the moment of his death. He gave up the ghost. Don't take that lightly. It means just what it said. It's also no accident, beloved, that in the Bible it mentions hyssop. It's not an accident that they put that vinegar on hyssop, which is known as a cleansing herb in the Bible. A form of oregano, which has powerful healing and medicinal properties. This is not an accident in this little glimpse of scripture we see right here. That these things are mentioned, beloved. Because we know Jesus is the perfect lamb that was slain. And you go to Exodus twelve twenty two and you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin and none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning and remember that was in the instruction in the old covenant when they were supposed to use uh, the hyssop and the blood of the lamb to cover the doorposts so that when the angel of death came, that uh, that curse of the firstborn being uh, killed or dying would not happen to them. They were covered by the blood. And everyone who did this, they did this in, in faith in believing that what God has said was indeed going to come to pass and they would indeed be protected well it ain't no different for us beloved when we read this in the scripture that this payment for our sin that we see here in the scripture of Jesus going to Calvary the perfect lamb the lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world that that's the payment for our sin and I always like to say it is the once completed, never to be repeated, finished work of Christ. It is a Roman Catholic doctrine for there to be this perpetual sacrifice that's needed. That is not found in the Bible. That's their doctrine. And too many Babylonian Christian churches have adopted that demonic mindset and concept it is not the doctrine of this book Jesus don't need to do anything over it's completed it's done That's why I get so irritated with people that want to keep going back over the sin question. And I get it for new believers. Don't misunderstand me. But some people are struggling. Y'all been saved 25, 30 years. What? You just call the devil a liar and believe the scripture and keep it moving. When he tries to lay some junk at your door.
paid in full means paid in full. Kicks rocks, devil. In Jesus' name. But getting back to my, my previous thought, what I wanted to elaborate on was, here people are out in the middle of nowhere. You get some believer or believers that come through and tell you about the Savior. And you believe on him and you get saved. And they leave and they go on to the next township and you never see nor hear from them again. Nobody started a church here where you are. What would happen to that person? Well, I would presume if they hungered for more, they'd have to either go follow them. Or ask, where is the church where we can hear some more, which is just an assembly of other believers. Or maybe they went on in life finding a believer here and there to fellowship with. That's that's a beautiful thing. But they didn't have a Bible that they could turn to. They didn't have one they could tuck under their arm and go read some inspiring passage the next morning or that evening before bed. They didn't have that. And yet we know once they became a believer, if you understand this book, they were saved. And they would have had to have been led by the Holy Spirit. And whatever law, if they were Hebrew, that they knew. Because Jesus didn't come to destroy the law. He came to fulfill. That's why I get so irritated with people accusing us. Because we say you don't have to keep the law to be saved. They want to attack us as though we're saying be lawless. <laughs> Which is not the same thing. We're not telling people be lawless. He's written the law upon our hearts. I don't have to run through the list of the Ten Commandments and then the other all together, the 613, which wouldn't even really apply because not everything applied to women, not everything applied to men. So however that parsed out to which ones for men and which ones were for women. All of this stuff, you know, the letter of this word is not the spirit of this word. There were certain things the Lord was telling them not to do that they because they're unregenerated, had no other choice but be legalistic about. That's what unregenerated man does. And the letter of the law kill it. But where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. This is why it's so important that when Jesus said, I have to go. Because if I don't go, the comforter can't come unto you. And he told us that he's going to send the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost was coming with power and fire. And that we learn in the scripture that he'll lead us and guide us into all truth. Sometimes you don't even have your Bible handy. You might be somewhere and the Holy Spirit will drop the exact scripture on you that you need it brings it back to your remembrance. Or he leads you and guides you in which direction to go. And then sometimes you just have to blindly step out in faith that he is going to keep you whatever decision you make because you've been praying and you didn't get a go left or a go right. You you didn't get a stand still either. You didn't know sometimes you don't act. Sometimes you have to act. Sometimes you need to go left. Sometimes you need to go right. Maybe you need to go up. Sometimes you need to go down. Whatever it is that you needed to, to do, you, you didn't get an answer. But the situation may require some action on your part. So you decide, you know what? I'm just going to trust God. Because the Bible says the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm not doing evil. In other words, I'm not I'm not planning to come do some sin. 
So all this is is me conducting my daily business or doing whatever. Lord, I'm leading. I'm trusting you to lead me and guide me and direct me. If this ain't what you would have me to do, this is what I often pray. Block me so I can't do it. If this is what you would have me to do, make my passage clear. And then I proceed. Beloved, the thing that drives me absolutely bananas with all of this works righteous heresy that these people, I don't even know what... uh, the the more I'm studying these scriptures, the more I see this is exactly who Paul was talking about when he said they went out from us because they were not of us. Now, the, the trick here for them, because we ain't playing no tricks, they playing tricks. And we know silly rabbit tricks are for kids. Why? They said that in the commercial and they telling you because a kid is a goat. Tricks are for goats. Tricks are for the devil's children. Put it right in the commercial. Whether they knew it or not. That's saying. That's exactly what that meant. And they come into the church. Trying to play tricks on us. Pretending to be one of us. When they don't believe in the soul sufficiency of the Lord Jesus Christ. They do not believe in his word. They always make excuses for it. Or tap dancing around stuff. That doesn't support. Their doctrine of devils. That you can lose your salvation. Or that in some way. Which is the same thing. It's not eternal security. Then you know what I would. In, in my never to be humble opinion, if somebody came to me to preach the gospel and I, I didn't know the Lord and they told me, well, yeah, but you, know, you got to be careful because you could lose it. And blah, 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 then then I had to say, well, what good is it? If I got to jump on a on a wheel like a hamster on a, in a habit trail going around and around and around. And I can't never watch this now. You can't never get off because if you get off, you ain't doing enough. And here's the demonic, here's the whole demonic concept. You know, that hamster, he gets on there and he's going to get his exercise, run, 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 run. And he's going to get tired and he got to get off, right? He got to go rest. You got to go, you got you kill yourself. These devils want you to stay on that perpetual wheel to kill yourself, to wear yourself out. You will never have any peace being on that little wheel, running, 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 running. You can't. And yet the scripture tells us there remaineth now, therefore, in the book of Hebrews, a rest for the people of God. Let us therefore labor to enter into that rest. The labor is to put aside the mindset of this demonic world, to put aside the fake people that come and tell you that you got to keep doing this, that, and the other thing, or you ain't really saved. We have to push that aside. That's a labor. The mental albatross that they try to place on you. It ain't enough just dealing with the beast system we in. Here come these ain'ts. No, I didn't say saints. I said ain'ts. And want to talk you out of faith in Christ alone. And the authority of the scripture. Because that's what they're doing because they actually... Have to contradict the scripture. To sell you that you could lose your salvation. They are emissaries of the devil. Second Corinthians 11. Let's start at verse 13. Uh, 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers 
also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Let's stop right there. Paul says that a couple of times in the scripture. When he talked about, what was it, Alexander the coppersmith did him much evil. He said, may the Lord reward him according to his works. We need to remember that. When people do us evil, may the Lord reward you according to your works. <laughs> the same thing he says right here for these emissaries of the devil. See, they're pretending to be in league with King Jesus when they're in league with Satan. And he says in verse 15, Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. It's already set, y'all. It's already established. I told you, no one, you and I, no one is getting away with anything. Either your sin was paid for under King Jesus, and then now as a believer, everything we do that is for the Lord will be rewarded for. If we did anything according to the flesh or things that were evil that weren't right, when we go before the beam and seat of the Lord, everything that wasn't right, wood, hay, and stubble is going to get burned up. We're going to suffer loss. But the Bible is clear. It says, but the person's soul is not in jeopardy. The, they're still saved. L let me give you that scripture. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Let's, I guess we'll start at verse 12. Now let's start at 11. I like the, I like the way this reads. <laughs> For other foundation can no man lay. That is laid. Which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation. Gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. Every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it. Because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. But these heretics want to run around and make everything about salvation. When this book is clear, you are secure in Christ. If you're doing stuff that ain't right, it's all going to be measured. It's all going to be judged. It's all going to be tried by the fire. This is not talking about the fire of hell. This is judgment in that purification. You get the concept when you ever see those gold or coppersmith. When they're purifying that stuff, they, they put it in such high heat that certain other elements will burn and either separate or completely be burned up. Because God is interested in the purity. And it's saying that any of these works that may have been according to the flesh, maybe we even thought we were doing things for Christ, but it was all about us. He knows the heart. Bible says no man knows the heart but God. Why? Because Jesus is the man, Christ Jesus. That's why I say but God. Now, it's very clear right here. This shuts down lordship damnation. 
You can do this with numerous scriptures to shut down lordship damnation. Works righteous heresy. That that's what saves you. That it's, an, it's interwoven with salvation. It's a bunch of bunk. And it's blasphemy against not only the Holy Spirit of the living God. But King Jesus himself and the Father. The eternal Godhead. It blasphemes them. Because it sends the, the message that they're saying is against the doctrine of Christ. They present it as the doctrine of Christ when it is a, it's a Jedi mind trick. It is actually completely antithetical against. It is, listen to me, the spirit of Antichrist. They have inserted another gospel, which is not another. They have inserted false doctrine. They have flipped the scripture to fit their wicked hearts. That it has anything to do with man. Being able to save himself. That is Babylonian Christianity. That is. You might as well be a Freemason. If you think you can save yourself. All of these false religions are all about transcending to become God. And you cannot do it. Apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible does say as believers we are partakers of his divine nature. Of his nature. I, what does that mean? I don't know. Not in his fullness. I got a little glimpse just like the rest of you when you hear that. What does that mean? Yet it says it in the scripture. But see they want divine nature apart from Christ. It's blasphemy. The father sent the son to be the savior of the world. The plan of salvation is a conspiracy. <gasps> oh, I said the word conspiracy. Yes, conspiracies exist. You can conspire to do good or you can conspire to do evil. And they said, let us. Before the foundation of the world, they set this plan in motion. It's already established. This is how it's going to be. And then you got these devils that come along and speak against the plan set by the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The eternal Godhead. They come against the living God and contradict what this word says. They went out from us. They are not of us. It is another gospel which is not another. I hope I showed that to you plainly. That's what was on my heart and mind today. Be blessed, beloved of the Most High God. In the mighty name of King Jesus. Amen. Thank you.